everybody, it's Tyler here at Championships Check in. One of my favorite teams of the year, Ratchet Rockers, 1706. What a phenomenal season. Two regional wins already. Uh, and a team that, if you have not paid attention yet, this team has been really on fire. I think your robot a couple of years ago, how absolutely incredible that was. And I think this robot's going to top this as well, too. Looking phenomenal in our division so far. We have so much to cover here on Ratchet Rockers as we go through. We actually be talking about a uh, the new uh, Thirky Bot uh, Swerve. They were one of the beta testers for it. So we'll be talking about that as we go through. A lot of great stuff with the robot as well, too. So we go through pose estimation, talk about uh, how their uh, shooter is working as well, too. A great transfer system. So let's learn more about Ratchet Rockers coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Andrew, will start talking about, uh, I mentioned earlier, one of the beta test teams for the new ThriftyBot Swerve. So talk to me more about your experience with, with that uh, Swerve drive so far, and then we're gonna be talking about your awesome uh, handoff system as well. So, so far we're really liking the new Thrifty Swerve. It's beltless, which is something we really love. Um, we love the gearing. We can change our gearing to more torque, more speed. Uh, right now we keep it a middle gearing, so we have a pretty even torque and speed. Um, we like the inch and a half wheels. We get a ton of grip. Can keep going. Let's take a little bit more closer look on this overall. Like, how how has the weight been compared to may, maybe other swerve modules? Uh, any any things that you're like, hey, like maybe we submitted this for feedback to Thrifty about anything like that? Uh, we like the so the steel outside of the gear, but then aluminum inside, so it saves a lot of weight. And then the gears are fairly durable too. So. So we can't wait to see, because these are going to be coming out, uh, I think, later as we get into uh, next season as well, too. So we can't wait to learn more about that as well. Talking about uh, your intake and your handoff system, how that works out as you start to go through this note journey on your robot. So the note can come in from the front or the back, and it'll go up the, the intake into the shooter. And then from the shooter, it'll get dispersed to either the handoff or the amp, or it will be shot into the speaker. As you're looking at, at a transfer wise, how, when you were doing like a dual-sided intake on it, what considerations did you have to make in order to get that transfer in so you could pull in notes from both sides? Um, so for the front side, we had to add an extra roller right here because if we would hit the wall, it wouldn't, it would just get to stay under. Gotcha. So we have an extra roller, but on that side, it's closer to the edge to where if it's against the wall, we can still reach. And were those changes made like as you're coming into the championships or ma any major iterations you made uh, either late in the season or coming in the champs? Uh, the intake was has stayed pretty much the same since kickoff. That was one of the first things we designed. We did add uh, the front roller a couple weeks later. It just took a while to get uh, perfect. It was adding a lot of uh, tension. Gotcha, Aiden, we gotta talk about this differential shooter uh, that you're doing as well. So let's cover more about that. And of course your elevator system and let's showcase how some of this works. So our differential shooter, it's not a differential in the typical sense. So what it's doing is it one side powers the axle all the way across. Then the other side uses a Kraken mounted under the shooter to basically use that live axle as a dead axle and spin one side as at a different rate than the other. So you can see you kind of like, you, we can spin one side and then spin the other side like a different direction. And that allows us to really get that note path really smooth. We noticed in our earlier events, whenever we didn't have the differential, that notes would dive because they had like no spin. We were just knuckleballing it which was good for within the wing. But once we wanted to get, say, out to the edge of the wing line or out to the midfield, notes would just dive and do flips by the time they got to the speaker, so. I, I gotta ask you, I have to admit, I was a little surprised not to see Ratchet Rockers go with a turret this year um, as well. So talk to me more about your decision to go with the type of shooter. It's been working great, obviously, for things, but talk about as you were approaching the Crescendo game, where your decision-making matrix was in regards to how you went. So we talked about the turret design for a while. Our main conclusion was it was going to add a lot of complexity to the robot. Part of those handoff sequences and like overall intake was going to be harder. So our trade-off was instead of having a turret, we got two intakes. So that really allows us to get those smooth cleanup cycles. Like we can really, we can get all four notes in an amplified period in about five seconds. So yes, it's not quite the same as teams sit like say Poofs who have like an amazing turret, but we can come pretty close with a way simpler robot and it's fairly comparable. 
I, I see you're doing pretty darn well. So absolutely on that. Uh, talk to me more about your elevator system. If we can deploy that as well too and take a look at that. And of course, uh, at some point we'll see how your shooter works also. Yeah, so our elevator, this year we took a lot of inspiration from High Tide's robot last year. So the bell, th there's a gearbox below the whole elevator that feeds the belt up into the tubes. So once the belt goes up into the elevator, we have a bunch of custom blocks that feed the pulley up in and like out. So there's a tensioner on either side of the carriage that really allows us to get that belt tight. But that gearbox essentially just drives along the belt to pull it up and down. It took a lot of tuning and a lot of engineering time, but in the end, it's fairly compact and we've been fairly happy with it. Can you run us through like a uh, overall cycle, what that kind of looks like with the robot? Yeah, so typically whenever we intake a node, it first stages in the shooter, and then we can make a call on the fly whether to go into the carriage, what we call the thing on the elevator, or just feed into the shooter and shoot into the speaker. So what will happen is the note comes up through the intake and the rollers spin in a very specific way to get the note to pop up and flop into the orange roller in the carriage. I know you're not able to intake right now because we have it up high. Uh, what about from your shooter? Can we see how that works? So right now, the note has been uh, intaked and it goes all the way into the shooter. And then it'll feed from the shooter into our, back into our intake a little bit and then go back up and into the carriage. So. And then this is good for our amp. And then if it, for our trap, it'll go a little bit higher. It'll go to about here on the note to get up over the ledge of the door. Uh, this is the amp. And then that's the trap. So we'll climb and then we'll get the, over the trap and we'll uh, spin out the note into the trap. As you guys were approaching the uh, trap, has that strategy for you changed at all from the beginning of the season to where you are now right here at Championships? It's been pretty similar the whole year. Uh, we came up with the carriage idea fairly early. It took a while to get down. We had to add an extra couple of rollers. Um, overall, it stayed fairly similar. All right, let's hand it over to Michael to talk more about uh, the programming side of things. Walk me through what you're doing for like your pose estimation as well too. I know you're doing some object detection as well. Walk me through what your team's doing. So on this robot, especially we have three limelights, one on the front, one on the back, and one on the bottom. The one on the front and one on the bottom is used for a pose estimation for a robot using the April tags. With the pose estimation, we use that for our shooting. It knows our XY coordinate and aim at the XY coordinate of the goal. So it always aims at the goal whenever there is a defense spot blocking the April tag. It always knows where it is. When it can't see an April tag, we use odometry for we use odometry for tracking our post solutions. So we're always somewhat accurate of where we think we are. The one on the back limelight is mainly used for uh, the source tracking whenever we pick up from the source and our for, from our feeding. So our feeding is fairly accurate with the back limelight. And for the back on the top, we use object detection, which if you put a note, it detects where the node is and it feeds into our robot network tables and it notes the XY coordinate and the robot can just drive itself to pick up the note. Normally we use we used to use this in auto, but we found that to be way too slow. So we sure. use odometry to take over after the wing line. But we definitely use it in teleop when our driver can't see the note. I want to ask you a little bit more about autos. So something I've been asking a lot of teams here is how is your autos iterated or changed coming to the championships? You know, we're starting to see like counter, counter autos happen, that race to the center line is. What is your team starting to see and how have you approached it here at championships? So at championship, we found out that we need a lot more different configurations with our autos. So we came up with, I would say about 20 different autos of what order we pick up the notes in order to beat those teams to the center line. We also switch over to to odometry for picking up the notes since we found that to be a lot faster than actually using note tracking to pick up the notes if we know we're gonna beat them straight to the line. Cool. Well, Ratchet Rockers, congratulations on a phenomenal season here so far. This is such a cool robot. So thanks for telling us more about it, what you've been doing and good luck here at the World Championships. There's a lot of great stuff that teams can learn from this. So good luck the rest of the way, of course, you're here in your division. All right, thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.